r slash ask reddit. Serious, people who've experienced the paranormal or seen cryptids and other unknown creatures, what's your story? When I was a child, my niece who my parents adopted after her parents died, would tell us about nightmares she had about a clown living in our airing cupboard, from UK, you could call it a boiler room. We always just thought it was bad dreams obviously. My partner on one of the times she slept at my mother's house, she told me she was having dreams of a clown living in the airing cupboard. No idea how to explain that one. Was there a clown in there? No, aside from the boiler it was just dust in there. Absolutely no idea why two people who had never even met each other managed to have the same dream. Could be incredible chance, or something else but it always stuck out as strange to me. Nothing sinister from what I remember. My dad had stuff going on in his house, so much crap that almost every kid who would come in, myself, my sisters, my brother and my dad have all had multiple experiences in there. I remember one time, I was going upstairs to have a shower. The bathroom was the end of the hallway and on the way to it, I had to pass by the room I shared with my sisters when I was over for the weekends. As I passed by, I seen something sit up on the bottom bunk, we had bunk beds in there, out of the corner of my eye. This thing looked like a little girl. She had pale skin, short black hair that was cut in a bob style with straight bangs covering her forehead, and her eyes were these massive circles with large black dots in the center for pupils. She was facing sideways so her right shoulder was facing me when she turned her head, the other half of her body looked like it was under the blankets. I remember getting such an intense feeling of fear that I went back downstairs and refused to go upstairs at all or even sleep in the house. My dad had to set up the camping tent in the backyard for the rest of the weekend. If this occurrence had been nothing or me just seeing things that weren't there, I feel like I shouldn't still remember it in perfect detail at the age I am now, seen it when I was maybe 6 or so. I'm 23 now. After my father passed away, I went to live with my friend and his mom for a little while. Things with my mom were very strained and I didn't want to stay at my friend's house initially. But they didn't want me alone during that time. Staying at anyone's house always made me feel uneasy for some reason. My first night there, early in the morning I woke up to the sound of my bedroom door opening and a gentleman wearing a red flannel and bib denim overalls came into my room holding a bag of tools. He turned the light on, looked at me and walked through another doorway to the utility room. Soon after, I fell asleep again. But when I woke up this time, room was dark. Everything was the same when I went to sleep the night previously. Figuring I imagined the whole thing I went upstairs for coffee and asked my friend's mom if the guy with the overalls is still here. With a weird look, she informed me that it's been her and I in the house all night. At this point, I'm very confused. So I explained detail in detail about what the man looked like. Height, weight, clothes, facial hair. Everything. She turns pale white and bolts to her room and retrieves a photo. When she shows me the photo, it's the man I saw in the basement that morning. Even wearing the same clothes. She tells me that he passed away 30 years ago. It was her grandpa who owned the property previously. He had killed himself to save the farm when he invested his money into horses instead of machines and his investment flopped. To keep the bank from taking the farm. On a stormy night he took a lightning rod into the middle of a pond and nature took his life when lightning struck the rod. Because of this, life insurance paid out and his suicide saved the family diary and kept the house from being foreclosed on. Working on ships, some are pretty old and you hear some weird stories. Four years ago during a South American season, I used to hang out with the Brazilians, fun and cool people, one was the gift shop manager. He'd rant and rant about how his team is lazy and how they keep trying to weasel out of working because they claim to see a little girl running around the gift shop, one night, we were having coffee with the head of the photography department and he's extra salty, talking about how he'll have to do an extra couple of hours because of his team. In the middle of the night, I get a call from the photo manager, she tells me our friend is in her cabin crying and shivering, I run over, thinking he got some bad news from home or something. Turns out he was working in his office, the door faces a long mirror that covers most of the wall, closed section, and after hearing giggling, he saw the shadow of a child through the reflection as if she was leaning to look into the door while trying to hide, only in the reflection, he says he jumped up and ran out, the giggling and sounds of tiny feet running around the shop and into the casino, same deck. I'm not big into the paranormal, but the following day I mentioned this to my boss and she told me that about 20 years back, a little girl came out of the theater with her parents, she was running ahead of them, around the gift shop, but eventually she went into the casino, coming out at the atrium, a drop with glass lifts that go from deck 12 to 5, so a good drop, she leaned over the railing to look down, lost her balance and fell, breaking her neck on impact and dying. 
Apparently it was a common sighting at the shop and casino. In Snohomish, Washington there's a bar called the Oxford, it has a violent history as there have been at least two or three deaths there. My parents have gone a few times to listen to live bands and heard of women being locked in the bathroom and plates shattering in the kitchen when no one was around. One night my dad had a glass of red wine and headed downstairs to the basement, where there's pool tables and another bar. He says that the cup part of his glass exploded in his hand, there was a pop sound. He looked down and he only had the wine glass stem in his hand and there was no red wine or glass on or around him. In a bit of a daze he went to the bartender, handed her the stem and explained what happened and she replied, no problem, that kind of stuff happens all the time. And handed him a new glass. This is pretty mild, but I took my dog for a walk, got home, went to the corner store five minutes away. When I came back open the door and my whole house smelled like perfume. Locked gate, locked house, security cameras and a dog that barks at everything. I live alone, nobody stopped by and my house smelled like someone ran around spraying Chanel number 5. It doesn't sound believable, I'll never be able to explain it, but it happened. I posted this in another thread like this a while back. Several years ago, some friends and I were driving through one of the millions of small towns around the North-South Carolina border in the mountains. It was well after midnight. My friend looks behind us, and sees a pair of headlights coming up on us. Quickly. Like, easily 60 to 70 miles per hour when the limit is 25 or so. No signs of stopping so my friend pulls over to let the car pass. And what passes us is two lights. Just lights. Far too bright to be a firefly or any luminescent creature. As bright as headlights, if not brighter. Not attached to anything. No car, nothing. Just two lights booking it down the road. When my youngest son was about three years old we were eating out in town and he got a bit restless. I decided to take him for a walk and as I held a door open he got away from me and made a break for it, pedestrian area so it's safe, he bolted into an adjacent site which had a ruined chapel slash almshouses with info boards for tourists. I found him staring up at the chapel ruins. What are you doing, mate? His reply? A long time ago I got married here what? A long time ago. Then a switch flicked, he was a three-year-old with energy to burn and was off running again. Shook me to my core. This happened to me when I was six. I was in my bed sound asleep when I felt the mattress beside me slowly shift as if someone was laying beside me. I opened my eyes and there was a full-grown adult woman beside me. She wasn't particularly scary, just normal looking but she was a strange person in my bed. Of course I opened my mouth to scream but before I did she put her finger to her lips as if to tell me to be quiet. Her eyes looked very frightened and she seemed to be silently pleading for me to keep quiet. Of course I screamed my guts out and I heard my parents getting up out of their bed. The strange woman just looked very sad, her eyes were full of tears. Dad turned my bedroom light on and as soon as he did she just wasn't there anymore. No sign of her at all. I slept in my parents' room that night. I was very scared but even more so I had a deep feeling of sadness. That was decades ago and I still remember it clearly. I've had a few run-ins like that, different people though, never that same woman. I am curious about your other experiences, what were they like? One time when I was about 14 I was staying at my friend's house. He had bunk beds and I called the top. We went to sleep like normal but in my dream I saw a hooded man standing in the doorway. He walked in and stood staring at the both of us in our beds. When he looked at me I felt ice cold and sick to my stomach. There was an overwhelming sense of dread running through me. I didn't want to draw attention to myself by calling for help so I stayed dead quiet. The hooded man came closer and leaned down toward my friend in the bottom bunk. I was scared for my friend but relieved that its attention wasn't on me. I remember feeling ashamed of my cowardice. There was an ungodly noise coming from the hooded figure. A low, deep rumbling that grew louder and louder until it hurt my ears. I remember hoping that it would wake my friend's parents but at the same time felt that we were trapped and alone in here. The man continued his scream slash rumble until a never-ending swarm of insects started flying out of his hood. They were flying all around the room. I remember them buzzing my face but I was too afraid to move to swat them away. The bugs kept flying out and soon the room was filled with them. I don't remember what happened next but I must have passed out. The next day we were talking about how we slept and my friend's dad asked if we had a good sleep. I replied that I had a nightmare and it scared the hell out of me. My friend spoke up and see he had a nightmare as well. This is where it gets weirder. My friend said that he dreamed that he had thousands of bugs crawling all over him. I explained my nightmare and it creeped us both the hell out. 
Luckily they moved house not long after because there was no way in hell that I was ever going to sleep in that house again. I have a similar story. I often get sleep paralysis and I'm used to it now but the first time I experienced it it was pretty terrifying. I dreamed that I was in an arena and all my family and friends were in the stands calling out to me. About 10 feet away there was a creature running straight at me. It looked like a very emaciated man just skin and bones but his mouth was filled with sharp teeth that almost looked like razors. I couldn't really move, you know how dreams can be, and he grabbed my hand and put it in his mouth and bit down. I felt the most excruciating pain and then woke up. I switched on my bedside lamp and my hand was all red where he had bitten me. I was pretty freaked out and I got up to use the restroom and try to calm down when I saw my roommate leave his room. I called out to him and said man I just had the most awful dream he looked kinda shocked and said me too so I asked him what he dreamed and he told me almost word for word what I had dreamed the only difference was the creature didn't bite him but scratched him across his stomach. Then he raised up his shirt and I saw three scratch marks across his belly. I then told him my dream and we both were pretty freaked out for a while. Ever since the day I've had regular sleep paralysis and that creature always shows up while I'm paralyzed. I know this is the internet and people make up all kinds of stuff. But I'm telling the truth. It was the single scariest moment of my life. I was reading a library book before bed one night when I was a teenager. It was something really boring I had checked out for a history project for school and I couldn't keep my eyes open. I fell asleep with it on my bed. I had like a sleep paralysis event happen and I watched this shadowy figure of a man walk into my room, look around, pick up a few knickknacks and put them back down. It was so terrifying, my entire body was screaming to move but I couldn't, not even my fingers. I just wanted to scream for help but nothing happened, no matter how desperately I tried. I finally got enough courage to look at the man but he wouldn't come into focus for some reason. He was just a shadow, like he wasn't fully there. He came up to the side of my bed and stood over me, looking down at me for what felt like forever. I was so terrified but I couldn't move a muscle. Then he reached down, grabbed my library book, and turned, walking out of my room. I never found that library book, ever, after tearing apart my room in my house. My mom said it was a coping dream for losing the book but I distinctly remember falling asleep reading it that night and I even had sent a text to my boyfriend that night saying that I wished I had chosen a different book because this ome was putting me to sleep. I had to pay a fine and everything. Saw my cousin's doppelganger, he was at work and I saw someone who looked like him walk to my kitchen and then disappear. I checked the gas and the CO2 and then stayed outside for a while. I was later called by another relative telling me my cousin was taken to the hospital after getting in a car accident. He was okay but was unconscious due to the impact. I told everyone what I saw and the more superstitious relatives told me I had been given a warning. I frequently saw doppelgangers as a kid, specifically around age 6. The sightings always lasted for a split second. I thought it was normal, like oh there's my daily mental glitch. The one I remember most clearly is seeing my cousin standing in the entrance area of our house, wearing dark blue pajamas. He lived in a different state so there was no reason he should be there, especially dressed like that. When I was about 14 my family had just moved to a house in the suburbs where there was a lot of open space and the house had a huge backyard. One night about 10 p.m. I opened our sliding door to take out the trash and I saw two figures walking towards the house. The best way I could describe them is they were all black, slim almost looked and moved like kangaroos, but I was living in New Jersey and they don't exist in that area. Also they were walking four-footed, but when I opened the door and turned on the light they stood up on two feet and began to run. Now I turned and shut the door before I completely saw them run but I got a good enough glance to know this wasn't any regular animal like a deer. And besides there was never any deer in that neighborhood so this was definitely something different. Still creeps me out over 15 years ago. My dad used to work at a haunted house and wanted to add a ghost story to the website to get more people to come. He hired a medium to look around the place to see if she sensed anything. My dad didn't really believe in the stuff though. Halfway through the tour she asks if my father was missing a hammer. He said he was missing a lot of his tools. The medium said an old woman died in the floor above and had the hammer. My dad asked the spirit to give it back and the next day it was laying on the table. After that he left flowers for the spirit and it never took anything again. Okay, so not really a cryptid, but I reckon I've seen something undocumented. My wife and I were driving along the highway in remote northern West Australia. We come around a corner from behind a hill and there's this massive bird in the middle of the highway ripping into a kangaroo. We slam on the brakes to avoid hitting it and it spreads its wings and flies away. 
This thing's wingspan was easily longer than our Corolla, and the top of the bonnet was probably two-thirds the height of it standing on the road. It looked like a type of eagle. Now, a wedge-tail eagle is supposed to be the biggest flighted bird in the world. And I've seen wedge-tails, right up close and trained to do tricks. This thing was easily at least four times the size as that. It could easily lift off with a dog or small child. One day my wife came home, we were living in an apartment in Midtown. It's about 10 p.m. and I was taking the trash to the dumpster in the alley behind my complex. The complex had only six two-story apartments, the front door of each facing south. We lived in number five, and if you were to walk outside, once you open the door you there's a little raised landing where you'd put a welcome mat, step off the landing, you're on a walkway, and I have to go left or right because there's a very tall wooden fence separating the complex from the large house next door. So if you turn right and walk down past apartments 4 to 1 and through a gate, and you're onto one of the main streets in Midtown, or turn left, and you pass apartment 6 and go through a wrought iron gate and the dumpster is right there. It's a very short distance from my door to the dumpster and, with nothing to obstruct your view, once there you can see down the entire length of the walkway. The entire area is well lit, literally every unit would turn their front porch light on every night, and there is a street light right where the dumpster is, and one right on the other side of the street side gate. So it was easy to see my wife open the gate and head up the walkway towards our apartment. I waved at her and have no idea how she didn't see me, and I almost yelled but didn't want to scare her or startle the neighbors, but I was done so I just started walking the short distance between us. As I'm walking up, I see the door to our apartment open, of course I figured she opened it but it was dark so I didn't actually see her do it, then she kind of leans in and I could hear her calling my name, but she would not walk into the apartment, our apartment, why not walk right in, right? Then, when I got behind her and said hi she became frantic, asking me how the fuck did you do that, how did you get back outside? I explained I'd been at the dumpster emptying the trash, to which she interrupted me said no, you opened the door for me and walked upstairs, I called after you and you turned your head and looked at me but didn't say anything and just kept walking, and then she started crying. I searched the apartment, found nothing. We moved about six months later to the house where it now. One day shortly after we moved in, my wife thought she saw me walk past the windows that look into the backyard from the kitchen, but it wasn't, and again she said it looked just like me, and that it walked all the way around the house before disappearing, and then she realized I was in the bedroom. Creepy stuff. Something kind of similar happened to me. I was getting ready for bed in the bathroom, I had the door open as I was talking to my husband who was sitting on the bed. I was having a whole conversation with him, I even looked at him a couple times then he stopped answering me so I repeated myself, and he answered but was in the living room. Now the living room was past the bathroom and I never saw him walk by and there was no way I would have missed it. He comes into the bathroom and was like were you talking to me? And I said yes. He said oh I didn't hear you I was in the living room. So I asked how long he was in there and he said for a long time but he was gonna get ready for bed. I asked if he was ever in the bedroom in the last like 10 minutes and he said no, he's been in the living room the whole time. He swears he wasn't ever in the bedroom. So I don't know who the hell I was seeing and talking to but it terrified us both. Uck gives me shivers I can still see it just sitting up on the bed. Reminds me of that creepy fucking story on Reddit about the dude whose girlfriend runs in his apartment, slaps him, smashes stuff, breaks up and runs off crying. Only to come over moments later and ask why the place was messed up. They caught the person on camera coming in and everything but it wasn't his girlfriend at all, apparently. Some doppelganger or something else. When I was in high school I worked as a courtesy clerk at Albertsons. People were always telling me that they saw me somewhere in town when I wasn't there. One day when I got out of class at the end of school, I had to go straight to work. I wouldn't get home until just after 9 o'clock that night. So I walked in just after 9 o'clock and said hi people to my mom and my sisters. And they all looked confused. My mom asked me where I was coming from. I said I had been at work. My mom and my older sister both said, no you haven't. You came in hours ago said hi people and went upstairs. I said, no I didn't I hadn't been home since I left at 7 o'clock this morning. So we all four went upstairs to my room to see who came home. My door was closed. I usually leave it open. The light was on and the TV was on. I opened the door, no one there. But wait. It gets weirder. In high school we had a secondary school called the Skill Center. It was a place that had a collection of vocational classes you could take. For instance I took TV broadcasting, web design and forestry. One day I was waiting for the bus to leave the skill center after my broadcasting class and a teacher I never met ran up to me and said Zushiba. You need to come back to class I had never been in her class. But apparently I had been missing for the last few seasons. 
I tried to explain I wasn't in her class, but she did seem to know who I was. So she took me to the office. Thinking I was ditching. We go in and I tell the office clerk my name and she looks me up, sure enough there I am in broadcasting just like I said. But there I am, under my stepdad's last name in her class. I went by both names, it was a bit confusing but both names were relatively unique. So it's not like there would have been a random person that looks just like me in her class. It's just extremely unlikely. I had been in her class for the entire semester until I mysteriously stopped showing up. I had turned in work and everything. Even had my goddamn signature on it. One day this doppelganger simply stopped showing up. No one ever saw him again. I had a friend that lived at some apartments down the street from me. I went over, he answered and was like he have a seat, I got used the bathroom. I'm like cool, so I'm sitting there watching TV for 20 minutes or so, then the front door opens. There was my friend in work uniform staring at me like WTF. I'm like bro what did you do jump out the window? He's like WTF are you talking about? You opened the door for me, no I didn't, you did you said you had to shit, I wasn't here, you were, you okay, I'ma sit down. So one of my best friends was monitoring me for the rest of the night to make sure I wasn't tweaking. He also asked me to come closer so I can hear better as he was talking to me. He was checking his stuff to make sure nothing was missing, that much was obvious. We are still friends today, and he brought up that incident last year 2021, and the incident was like 2001, just to be sure. I have no explanation, do let me into his own apartment, then same dude showed up 20 minutes later wondering how the hell I got in. I come home from work one day and was coming up the stairs to the bedroom to change. I see my wife walk naked out of the spare bedroom into our room. She was probably three feet away from me. I followed her into the room asking, what are you doing creeping around naked? As I turn the corner and step into our room she isn't there. That's when I heard the shower running. She was taking a shower. I have no idea how I've seen this but when I started trying to gather what I saw she was beautiful and glowing like a hazy glow. I have seen other things in my life, one in this house, but nothing like this. I started to think maybe her soul was coming back to her or that she might be losing it. I don't know how to explain it to this day. Uck hell, that's terrifying dude, especially the fact it looked back at her from the stairs? Frick that. Sounds like a textbook doppelganger. I only know because my childhood friend encountered one. He was about 15 and home alone over a long weekend while his parents were traveling. But on Saturday night, around 7 to 8 p.m., he was in his bedroom upstairs when he suddenly heard his mom call up the stairs to come get dinner. He popped his head out of his room, confused as hell, but no one was there. So he called back down, Mom? Are you home already? There was a long beat but then after a few seconds, his mom walked slowly around the corner, coming from where the kitchen was, and looked straight up at him from the bottom of the steps. She just smiled, and then walked right back into the kitchen. My friend was frozen in place for a moment but then, again, he heard her call him to come get dinner. He said the only reason he didn't just walk down those stairs to see what was going on and why she was home so early, was because he thought it was strange that she didn't talk or utter a single word when she appeared. Like, why did she just smile at him and then walk away? That just didn't sit right, the fact he never saw her open her mouth. He could hear her, and he could see her, both plain as day. But never at the same time. And that smallest of details is why he chose instead to slam his door shut, lock it, and call his mom. She answered immediately and was still several states over, hundreds of miles away. They ended up calling the police for fear of an intruder or something, but they never found anyone in the house. It was all locked up with the security system on and everything. He did not sleep there alone anymore after that. Anyway, I don't know what the answer is here but just want your wife to know she isn't crazy. We spent a lot of time researching doppelgangers after that incident and the only bit of advice I remember is that you aren't supposed to speak to them or follow them. If I remember correctly, they really want you to follow them or go to where they are. Don't. Just treat them like they aren't there, as best you can. My first year of university a girl I lived with had her friend over one night. He'd been shooting footage on London Bridge at 3am to get some shots of it abandoned at night. He was really riled up about something and insisted we watch it with the audio up all the way and listen closely. Around the one minute mark I heard a low, deeply menacing voice whisper slowly as you walk the devil's path. Then something unintelligible. Then death. It felt so final and evil. He turned to us and said, did you hear it? I said I'd heard a voice. What did it say? I told him what I'd heard. His face went white. You heard the exact same thing as me. You're not the first. My housemate said she'd heard the same thing as well. 
He hadn't heard the voice when he was on the bridge, only when he was working on the audio, but he'd shown it to other people who had heard the same thing. I don't really have any other paranormal encounters so this one might not stand out, but I'm generally wary of paranormal stuff and this still scared me. There was some sort of presence on that bridge at night. It wanted to make itself known. I don't ever want to know what it was. I was on a beach called Butterfly Beach in Montecito, California. It was late at night and I was walking with a girlfriend at the time. We looked at the beach from an elevated walkway and noticed a small black humanoid creature about 4 feet tall with a massive spherical head maybe 2 to 3 feet in diameter. The moon caught it just right and it reflected on its spherical head. My girlfriend at the time screamed and the thing jumped into the ocean and swam away. It was just hanging out in the beach watching the moonlight I guess. Nothing I have googled has explained this thing we saw. When I was little, my bedroom was down a long hallway that overlooked the downstairs front door. I would always run fast down that hallway to my room at night. Once, I saw a figure through the yellow shades of the front door. It was the height of a toddler but the back of its head was elongated. I stopped and stared because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It just stood there, shadow so clear and unmoving. Who would be outside our door at night? After two seconds that felt like forever, I ran lightning fast to my room. To this day, I have no idea what I saw but I swear I saw. I was working at a summer camp in the PNW one year. On the second or third night there, I was jogging alone back from the staff campfire to the cabin, where the campers and my co-counselor slept. I'm walking in this big grassy throughway that has some taller reeds separating it from a shore of the Puget Sound. It's probably 2 a.m. Full moon. As I'm jogging I see this person in the reeds. It's wearing a white gown and it has no face, just hair. I only notice it because, as I approached it, it stood up from a crouched position, backed up joltily a few steps, then crouched down again, but I could still see it crouching there, like it was waiting. Its movements told me that it was not human. My knees gave out, and I felt flooded with fear as I collapsed. I tried to run back to my cabin but my legs would. Not. Work. I crawled and scrambled there on all fours. I tried to scream but no sound came out. Just gasping. I finally got to my cabin and, and fumbled with the doorknob for what felt like a minute before I could open it. I closed the door and stood there waiting for a while inside. I didn't hear anything, but I barely slept. At some point later that night I remember laughing, thinking oh, it was just one of the campers peeing. I was hysterically laughing at myself for like 20 minutes, then fell asleep. Next morning though, I realized that no campers returned to the cabin that could have potentially been out there peeing that night. I asked all of them, and all of them said they hadn't gone out to pee the previous night. I'll add that this was a camp that was overtly for non-religious, skeptically minded staff and campers, of which I was and still largely am, but I have no explanation for what I saw that night. Still scares the crap out of me just typing this. Trigger warning, death of a child. Skip this video 35 seconds if you are sensitive to similar content. I went to work and saw my dead child. It was 6 in the morning and I went to work, as I went in, I heard rustling in the trash. It was pitch black. I went round there just thinking it was a raccoon because we usually get them but no, it was much worse. My child had died from cancer but I wasn't at the hospital when he died. As I looked in the trash I saw a corpse and it was literally my child, not alive, dead. My dead child in the trash outside 7-Eleven isn't out of the ordinary. That was two years ago and I've needed therapy ever since to make sure I'm not going crazy. I've told this story before but while my husband and I were driving through the middle of nowhere Nevada in the middle of the night, we swore we saw a gargoyle or something fly across the highway. It had a huge wingspan, two arms, and two legs. We only saw it for a second as it crossed in front of our car but we both saw the same thing. It could have been some sort of massive bat I guess but gargoyle was definitely what came to mind. Ever since I was 10, I've always encountered a sleep paralysis episode once a month. This experience I will never forget. I went to sleep really early than I usually do. Probably around 7 or so. I woke up at 2 in the morning and found out I couldn't move. I tried calling my mom and dad but nothing. Living in a big room was always unsettling for me since there were lots of shadowy corners. I'm saying this because in one corner there was a long dark black figure. It had no facial features from what I remember. But the legs and that huge long body is what terrified me the most. It crept closer and closer. Every movement felt like hours. Then it got to the side of my bed and their long finger was pointed at me. I closed my eyes and I think that's when I passed out. I woke up a few hours later at 4 and it was still dark. The figure was gone though. 
I didn't get out of my bed or anything. I just cried and cried and cried. I stayed up the rest of the night looking at the corners every second. The trauma from that was so bad that I had to go see a therapist, and my mom pulled me out of school for a few days so I could relax and be to myself. Every now and then I think about that day. And it makes me cry. The thought of me thinking I would die or being taken still scares me. I've had a somewhat similar sleep paralysis event that honestly felt like more of an out-of-body experience. TLDR at bottom. I was 17 living at home in my old creepy house. As I was falling asleep, I started seeing these horrifying images of corpses and decaying bodies. It scared me so I opened my eyes, but it didn't stop. I just kept seeing flashes of dead, mutilated bodies overlaid on my vision. So I closed my eyes again and hoped that it would go away. Suddenly it stopped and I got the worst sensation of pins and needles I've ever gotten, all over my body all at once. It was somewhere between extremely strange and excruciating. Then suddenly that stopped too, and I could hear wind rushing all around me and I had the sensation that I was flying. I wondered why it was so dark until I remembered I had closed my eyes. When I opened them, I was flying around my room in circles. When I stopped, I was thousands of miles above my house looking through the roof into my bedroom, and there was a tall hooded figure standing right by my bed watching my sleep. It was terrifying. It looked like one of those easy Halloween costumes where you toss a sheet over yourself and say you're a ghost, only the sheet was black and had no face but its head was bent towards me. It was also hovering off the ground by about an inch. I closed my eyes and thought to myself I want to return to my body right now. I felt the pins and needles again and woke up. I was too scared to sleep but my body was too exhausted to stay awake, so I felt myself drift off uncontrollably. But I was scared. So when I felt the pins and needles again, I sat up to wake myself up, only this time I sat up out of my body and was inches away from the hooded figure. It didn't move or say anything. It just looked at me. What I only found out afterwards was that my mom has had similar out-of-body experiences where she floats around the house, and she always sees slash feels the same hooded figure following her around. TLDR, I had either a sleep paralysis episode and or an out-of-body experience wherein I saw a tall, black, faceless hooded figure standing by my bed watching me sleep. I suffer from a fairly well-known, but understudied affliction known as Meniere's disease. It's an inner ear disorder that affects the middle ear. Specifically the hearing and balance functions. Symptoms include tinnitus, a feeling of fullness in the afflicted ear, permanent hearing loss, and debilitating vertigo attacks. I was diagnosed with it in 2000 at the age of 18 after suffering two years of horrible vertigo attacks. It was a pain to find a diagnosis, but once we did, my mom got us hooked up with a specialist that was able to somewhat treat it. Since that time I have continued to have the tinnitus and fullness, but the vertigo attacks have all but vanished. In fact, by the time this story happened in 2015, I hadn't experienced any sort of vertigo in over a decade. Enough of that though. As the story goes, I was working late into the wee hours of the morning when I decided to take a break to catch a smoke and take my dog out. Once we got outside and downstairs to the small grassy area next to my apartment building, I let my dog off the leash and popped a squat on the stairs and watched as she did her doggy stuff. By the time my cigarette was halfway finished, she had already taken a long leak and was now starting to make big sweeping circles looking for a place to park her poop. Knowing it would probably be a couple more minutes until she found her ideal spot, I just kept on smoking while I counted her laps, it was 10 at that point. As she does with her weird little poop ritual, she'll make one big final circle outside of the area she has been stomping around in before zeroing in. As I watched her start to make her final sweep, she stopped dead in her tracks about 20 feet in front of one of the trees that spot the landscape in front of my apartment complex. I was about another 30 or so feet behind her location, but I could see from where I was sitting, that her hackles had come out and her body was completely rigid. Knowing my dog like I did, she was about 20 seconds away from losing her shit and waking up half the neighborhood with her angry bark. I put my smoke out and started walking her way and softly calling her name. Usually this is enough to break her focus and get her to calm down, but that night, she was onto something. As I started getting closer to her, I noticed a change in my ever-present tinnitus. It had changed in pitch and become a lot louder. Louder than I remember it being in a long time. Another few steps, and I start to feel a weird sensation behind my left eyeball. It was not an unfamiliar feeling, but like the level of the tinnitus, I had not felt it for some time. I took another few steps where I come up on my dog and gently pet her back. As I did that, a piercing pain shot through the left side of my head. Once again, it was not an unfamiliar feeling, but it was not something I had experienced in some time. Nor did I want to. 
it was the telltale sign that within the next 90 seconds, I was going to start my first vertigo attack attack in nearly 11 years. I started to talk to my dog in a more stern tone to try and break whatever trance she was in, but she ignored me and continued to focus on the tree in front of us, only now she was letting out a deep guttural growl unlike anything I had ever heard from her before or since. Like clockwork, the pain behind my left eye and left side of my head abruptly ended, and I was hit with a wave of heavy vertigo. I hooked on my dog's leash and stood up. When I did, the vertigo gave off the sensation that my brain had detached from the base of my spine and was doing freeform back flips in my skull. I had to fight to stay upright, and keep my eyes from rolling back so I had enough perceived balance to make it back upstairs. To do this, I focused on the tree that my dog had been so upset about. And that's when it decided to step out from behind the tree and into our view. What it was remains to be seen, but I can tell you that it was tall. Taller than me, and I stand at 6 feet 7 inches. It was skinny too like unimaginably skinny. So skinny in fact, that you wouldn't believe organs could fit inside its torso. Along with its odd stature, the thing's skin was this deep pitch black. Due to the color, and the weird way it played with the poor lighting, it was impossible to make out any disenable facial or body features. From that impression alone, the only description I can muster up is that it looked like a poorly drawn 2D stickman that busted off the page. My dog was dead silent at this point, but she was shaking. We didn't dare move though, so I just stared at this thing as it looked back at us from maybe six feet in front of us. A few seconds more, and then the thing turned around and took off down the street away from us running at an astounding speed. It moved oddly though. Like it was gliding rather than running. Almost what a cross-country skier might look like, but even smoother and completely silent. It covered half a block in a matter of seconds before jumping over a six-foot fence in a single leap and vanishing into the night. A second after it vanished, my vertigo stopped, the tinnitus went down, and I was fine again. Well, mostly fine. I ended up doubling over and puking before walking my dog back. I don't know if my sudden vertigo attack was related to what I saw that night, but it certainly feels that way. Vertigo attacks that are associated with Meniere's tend to last an hour at their shortest and 24 hours at their longest. My attacks always averaged in the 12 to 16 hour range. This attack lasted less than two minutes. My best friend and I found a store that didn't exist. It was full of pagan items and things like it, such as zodiac sign necklaces, candles, and books. It was downtown in our small city, and we were both familiar with the area and had never seen this store before. We ended up not buying anything because we were a couple of broke teenagers, but we did agree that we were going to return when we had more money. Except that when we did have more money, maybe two weeks later, that store was gone. It wasn't that the owner had closed up and left an empty space behind. The doorway no longer existed. It hadn't been freshly bricked over or anything, it just wasn't there. My grandmother was a Cajun voodoo black witch, dark stuff, animal sacrifices, bloodletting, and the like. We were all convinced she had a place waiting for her in hell. She was not a big woman. She was maybe 5 foot tall, 100 pounds. At her funeral, they had four men carry her casket from the funeral home to the hearse. At the church, it took six to get her out. It took eight to get her into the cemetery, as she got heavier and heavier as they got closer to her grave. Ten men to get her to her actual grave. When we returned to her house, where the rest of the family was, me and my uncle went to the kitchen, and the kitchen was hot, like opening an oven hot, and it was mid-February at the time, in a house in the country with no electricity. Inside the kitchen, we both saw my grandma, whom we just buried, holding hands with four other women. I didn't know them at all, but my uncle knew a couple, one was his grandma's sister, who died, one was grandma's mom, who was long dead, but not all. We left. Have not been back in that house since. That was close to 30 years ago. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and tell us if you believe in the paranormal and have you ever had a paranormal experience.